So this week, I'm joined by the current Girvan Academy head teacher, Miss Elaine Harrigan. She attended Air Academy and went on to Glasgow Caledonian University to study business information management and qualified to teach as computing and business studies. Then later studied an MSc in school leadership and management. Her favorite subject at school was office studies and currently the highlight of her day is having breakfast in her garden, which I think is a really good way to spend your time. Welcome Miss Harrigan, thanks for taking part. Well, hello, it's great to see you. Hi there. Thanks for asking me to take part. Not at all. We met briefly in January when I was at the school at Gervin Academy speaking to the third years about starting their journey in similar subjects to what we're going to talk about today. I asked the class, I think, um, what was their absolute dream job? And one person said mattress tester, which I think is one of the best ideas I have ever heard. Do you remember what your first idea of a dream job was? Um, it's actually for me, I have to think quite a, quite a wee while back, um, probably for me back then, pathway planning, so thinking about what you wanted to do, it wasn't, it didn't focus highly in school, um, and of course I left school in the 80s, so at that point in time, you really had, it was that sort of two option, so it was, you leave school and you go to work, or you leave school and go to university, so back at that point in time, I left school and went to work, um, again, it was office studies, my favourite, favourite subject, uh, but back then, and I'm going to sound old again, back then <laughs> we didn't have computers in school. So the nearest thing that you could get to a computer in school at that point in time was a typewriter. Um, so for me, I, you know, I, I loved those keyboard type skills. So I suppose I've always wanted to work in that a computing type environment. Um, but basically at school at that point in time, there were no computers. Um, so really, I think, um, you know, working in that environment get into a computer-based uh, situation was really what I wanted to do um, but probably just at that time it was difficult to find out where that would be um, so going into that newspaper world was really really interesting for me. So what did you do as your first work experience then? Did you always want to kind of go into the office studies? Well, again, back then, really, work experience wasn't something that you took part in at school, so oh, wow. I didn't ever have, I know, I know, I am now feeling really old, <laughs> um, so I didn't have any work experience um, from school, but um, where, I, where I grew up, um, my friends, family, they had a local shop, so I have always worked, I think I was started working in their shop when I was something like 12 or 13, um, so I always um, worked um, from that point of view. So I suppose working with people, interpersonal skills, you know, I would have developed them back then and that's a part-time uh, job. They had, in the village, it's bizarre, they had um, a bakery, they had a shop, they had a butchers and when you worked for that family you were able to get experience in all of those different areas. So I think that was my work experience but not through school, obviously through um, just part-time work. Yeah. Okay. But what an opportunity, because you must have met so many different individuals with different personalities and different responsibilities that would open your eyes compared to being at school when you wouldn't see that. Oh, definitely. And I think that is, it's been able to see um, the amount, the variety in life and been able to interact with lots of different people, um, getting to know people. You know, I think that's really, really important. It's a really important skill um, to have those interpersonal skills um, and to develop them. Yeah. It's, it will be a big difference and um, I think my week of work experience really gave me that start of this is what people do because before then your nine, your pe people around you went to their nine to five and you weren't really convinced that you knew what happened in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it's really, really valuable and I think it's something that um, any student, if you've got a uh, work experience coming up or hoping to do it mm -hmm. with the environment that's currently um, with us, have a really good think about it because it's a week that you'll never get back and you want to do the most the most exciting mm -hmm. thing to you right now to see um if it's if it's worth taking on further yeah. no yeah. definitely and i think it's really interesting i mean you can go and work experience that might not be the exact field that you want to go into but i think you're right in saying that work experience provides you with that opportunity to see what it's like in a working environment because it's very different from a school environment so i think um, it's really important to take part in work experience definitely and lots of different ways now the the work experience week um, although we do have some young people that, that take part in that week-long experience uh, we also have young people that take part in a, in a longer um, workout programs where they're there on a, a regular weekly basis they go to a working environment um, every week 
um, throughout the course of the year. So I think um, we've moved on um, more so again to um, offer different work experience opportunities to young people. That's excellent. Yeah, I didn't know that was a, a part of the teaching side. And that's such a great opportunity. I would have put my hand up straight for that because um, I was always interested about what was at the other side of school. So mm -hmm. yeah, wow. Um, it's good to hear that there's a lot of um, push on that because I, I think it's really valuable, especially when you're 15. When you're 15 and you're in a, a work environment and you're asking questions, people are just delighted to talk to you because you're showing passion in what they are passionate about. Um, so I think that's, that's really valuable. When did you start thinking about a teaching career then? Uh, oh, that's the interesting part for me. So obviously I had left school. I went to work. I was working for um, 10 years and, and a range, the majority was in um, sort of newspaper work, but I worked in um, different types of, kind of organisations as well. And there became a point where I thought I wanted to do something um, a bit different. Um, and by that point in time, I really enjoyed working with computers. So um, I went back to uni as a mature student. I um, started uni at 26. Um, I already, I was already married, I, I already had a child by that point in time as well, so it was a very different university um, experience for me, um, but, you know, a great experience, um, and at that point in time, you know, going into a route in education um, was what I wanted to do, so I did my degree, um, and then I did a postgrad teaching qualification, um, again, it was down at old, what was known as kind of old Craigie College, the kind of teaching down in here. Um, so that was again sounds a long time ago. Um, uh, so yeah, so at that point in time, after ten years, I had really I had worked. I had the the working knowledge of the the field that I wanted to go into, and I think that really helped. When I went on to university, I didn't find it a challenge or a struggle because I had that working knowledge of of the area I was studying. Um, so really enjoyed uni, really enjoyed that time, um, and then obviously training to be a teacher. Yeah. That's, a, that's really interesting actually, it's such a big, people make it sound that if you don't go, if you don't go to university straight after school, you might have missed the boat a little bit, but yeah, when I was at uni yeah. there was loads of um, students who had been out and done work experience and they had that knowledge and that passion, mm -hmm. more yeah. so than maybe some of us, because mm -hmm. they had seen it. Most mm -hmm. of us hadn't been in a, a working environment long, as long as they had, or had any yeah. responsibilities yet. So we didn't know how to manage people, we didn't know how to negotiate in a group um, and that was something we had to learn after we got our degree. But it was obvious once if people had work experience for a few years or even 10 years that they were so much more on it with those things. So if you don't go to university straight away it's absolutely not a negative, I'd say it's almost a positive because you can see the other side of the goal. Um, very early on a lot of us kind of were like we want to be an engineer but we didn't even know really what that was day to day uh -huh. yeah, so, yeah. Um, that's really interesting did you have to really think about that option obviously you had your life set up was that a mm -hmm. scary decision to make or at that point you were like yes I know I need to do this this is absolutely where I want my life to go I think probably I knew where I wanted my life to go at that particular point in time and I think I reflect back on my school experience and it was a very different school experience than um, the experience a young person has nowadays. Um, going back to that pathway planning, it was almost, you know, the, there was no great expectation um, for a larger number of young people to go to university. And I think um, what young people do have now are so many more options. Um, so they have university, which is amazing. They have college, they have apprenticeships. So there's so many different routes into getting that dream job or great job that, that you want to get. Um, so I think more so now, it's, you know, there's a greater uh, wealth of experience for young people, uh, which is amazing. Whereas I think when I left school, it was very much a you work or go to uni at that point in time. Um, so I had chosen that work route, which worked out well for me. But, you know, although I, it did work well, you know, it was difficult. It was tricky. So probably would I have preferred in hindsight to go a bit earlier? Um, I probably would have. Um, but it was the route that I had to take um, and I think that's important. There are lots of different routes. There's no one route that's the right way. It's whatever is right for you and your life at that time. Um, but it does mean as if, as, as, you know, obviously it's taken me, it took me a bit longer to, to get to where I want to be age-wise, I suppose you would say. Um, so um, I think, you know, whatever route you take, whatever plan you make in life, you make it best fit your circumstances at that time. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'd say now more than ever, I don't know if you agree with this, that teachers have so much material on next steps and options. And there's so much out there now that just asking a teacher, what do you think I should do? I've got these skills, you've seen me in class. I think I wanna go in this direction. They have so much information that we would find so hard to find. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, and we have great services in schools. So we have, um, you know, our careers advisor is amazing, who gives great advice to young people, helps them plan their pathway. So I think you're right, the, the advice and the information. Again, if I look at my own experience, let's go back and think, you know, there was no internet really available back then. So you didn't have the, you know, that world at your fingertips that you could investigate and you know, get to know different jobs because there are so many different jobs out there. Um, and I think for us, you know, our focus was, you know, those those good jobs in our eyes back then were lawyers, doctors, teachers, you know, it was very narrow focus. Um, whereas nowadays there's so many amazing jobs that, you know, at my age probably we're not fully aware of, but thankfully I've got great staff in school who are yeah. aware of every job that's out there and available and all these different strands. And again, I suppose for you, you know, um, women going into engineering, for me, women in computing, you know, that was something different back then um, as well. You know, it wasn't always seen as, as the, the jobs that um, were, uh, it was more of a, a male focused environment back then as well. Yes, and it's what everyone saw when you're not talking about these things and the schools weren't as um, kind of pathway focused yeah. that it's just, you were left to see what you saw on television and on what your parents did and what the community did and yeah. go from there. And I think that's the, most, it's the hardest thing I think to do when you're 14 or 15 is to ask yeah. for the first time, whether it's a professional, a teacher, your dad's friend who does this, something that's really cool. Because you think, oh, I'm, t I'm too young, they're gonna laugh at me, or they're not gonna give me inf information, or they're too busy. If you ask them and just ask them and say, look, if you've got five minutes, I'd love to talk about what you do. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there'll be a negative situation. I've never experienced a negative situation with that. And it's the information that you gain is usually something that'd be really hard to find otherwise on the internet or on a textbook or from like other situations so just asking because yeah. that's the hardest bit you know describing jobs describing you know what happens um you know it's is great for young people to hear from other people and i think from other young people who have um gone down that path and route and experienced it quite recently um instead of somebody talking about it who experienced it you know who got into the profession maybe a long, long time ago. Um, I think current relevant um, information is always good. Yeah, so yeah, when you're making big decisions with your career, yeah. who were your mentors? Where did you find your mentors to help you with that? I think for me probably it was uh, my parents, believe it or not, were my, my main mentors. I mean, they really uh, brought me up with a very, very strong work ethic and, and no matter what you did, whatever your role was, you had to do the very best job that you could. Um, so for them, it was it was you know, very much, um, they instilled that no matter who you are, where you're from, it's, it's for you to decide the route that you want to go down, but the opportunities are there, but you have to work hard to get those opportunities, they don't just come to you. Um, and I think really that, that strong work ethic and that confidence in being able to say that you're able to do something, um, I think that really kind of put me in the right, the right course and the right direction um, in life. And I, I, always, I always think the same, you know, we can all do um, anything that we want to do when it comes to careers, but it's hard work, effort, and a bit of determination in there that, that gets you to where you want to be. Yeah. And that's so common still, you do rely on your parents for so much. So if they can give you um, the confidence and the, the ability to go in and strive at what you're passionate about and strive at what needs to be done sometimes, yeah. um, that's really important. And it's almost learning that as early as possible means you don't need to learn it later. So having yeah. your parents there to help you with that is fantastic. Yeah. But looking back, because I've asked you, to, asked you to look back to your work experience and things, you must be so proud of what the academies are doing right now. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's a great experience for young people. I think it's always when you're younger, you, at times you don't appreciate the experience you get, and it's not until you go older that you can reflect back and, and for me, compare my experience to the experience of a young person um, nowadays. Um, but definitely i think it's it's um schools are, are great places 
So yeah. what would you what would your advice be to students right now? Um, probably for me, I would think it is that it's that part about um, you know don't don't set limits on yourself. Really aim high that you know whatever whatever job or or course of study that you want to do, you know it's there and, and it's open to you. But you have to work hard, um, and if you work hard now. You know that that's great because it saves you that time when you're later on in life you know it's not like it was when i was back in school that you know you left school um, and went straight into jobs um so you have you know so many more options nowadays and i think it's it's really think about your options aim high uh, but work hard to get there i think that's probably the advice i would give young people just now um so yeah that's yeah. fantastic advice yeah work out what you want to do and where you're going and that all takes time it all takes work it all takes investigation it all takes thinking um, yeah. it doesn't happen overnight um, yeah. and that's that's something you're always learning at school and I think when you're in school you don't yeah. realize how much stuff you're picking up and how much you're learning about yourself and mm -hmm. how much your mentors in school your teachers your peers um, help you and and can support you in your path once definitely. you realise what that was and once you work towards that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think developing interpersonal skills, I think that, you know, is, is massive for young people and it is. It's about that, developing confidence, kindness, um, courage, you know, being being um, self-aware. But I think it's, it's we had a, a, a previous prize given speaker who um, really spoke about, you know, the, the, the greatest skills that they had was that ability to get on with people and to be polite, respectful and kind and, and how that helped you, um, you know, constantly in your life. Um, and I think that's, you know, it's, it's going back to those interpersonal skills that we need to develop as well. You can have all the, 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 the um, qualifications in the world, but you need, you know, it's the, the softer skills that you need to develop um, as well to complement that. Yes. Uh, absolutely and you need to learn them at one point you can yeah. short out of that so practicing them every day at school you do anyway but um that's really yeah really really valid to to continue working on and be aware of that's the yeah. i think that's the hardest part of being at school is you're so unaware of how much mm -hmm. you're learning and how much yeah. you're changing in yourself and becoming an adult yeah, and I think nowadays schools are very, very much a value-based organisation. So we think of um, Griffin Academy, respect, responsibility, ambition, community. Um, I think really important values, and we sort of work and live those values um, on a daily basis. And we encourage our young people to, um, you know, to get on board with that as well. And you know, we have those discussions around our, our core set of values. Um, and I think it's really important that young people understand um, their impact um, on, you know, the community as well. So, yeah, very much sort of values based. Yeah. And that community can work for them as well. If you go out into the community and see what's going on and see what the opportunities are and see if you can help or see if you can support something, that is all value. And I love that part of being in Gurban. Gurban's a town yeah. on the west coast of Scotland. So there's loads going on if you just go out and see it. There's so what's the bit of advice that you now have that you didn't have when you were 15, 16, 16 years old? Ooh. Um, I'd probably say it is that part of it. Keep learning, keep growing. Um, you're never the finished article. You're always, you're always developing. There's always something new to learn. Um, you know, at any point in your, in your life, in your career, um, I think it, it's, it's important to, to, to keep Sort of learning and keep growing um, and to, to keep that focus on, on what you're doing. Um, I think it, it keeps you healthy, keeps you fit, keeps you active, keeps your brain healthy. Um, you know, so I, I would just say keep, keep, keep growing and keep, keep learning probably would, my, would be my, uh, my kind of words of wisdom there. That's fantastic advice. I quite naively possibly thought, well, once I've got my degree, I'm an engineer and that is me. I don't have to do any more exams. I don't need to do any more work on myself. I'm done. I've done this for years. There is so much more to learn about team working and um, negotiating and all these different things, even in the workplace. And then your workplace is always changing. The industries are always changing. There's always new technology. There's always uh, changes in the, uh, like the system. Uh, like now everybody's adapting we're doing this on zoom something i've never done before so there's 
constantly things to learn and that's only a good thing. And as soon as you change your mindset to think it's a good thing and I'm happy to learn all the time, yeah. it will get so much easier. It will just become part of your day. And it's amazing that a job, a particular job, can take you in a totally different route as well. So, you know, I've gone from newspapers to um, education, you know, and in between I've worked in bars, I've, you know, I've worked in, in sort of various organisations, but it's always been a learning experience. It's always added um, to the skills, to the knowledge that I have. Um, so I think it's really important that, that through your time, you know, you take opportunities, um, you, you embrace new challenges. I think that's, that's really important. Yeah, so talking about change and adapting, how are you dealing with the lockdown? What do your days look like now? I would say it's really about keeping connected to people. So, um, you know, connected to family, friends, work colleagues. You know, um, we've had some great work quizzes that we've been doing on a weekly basis. So that, that keeps you, you know, the fun aspect of work still there and, uh, you know, that, that camaraderie with your colleagues, which is really important. Uh, but for me, it's, it's still having routine and a, a planned day. Um, what I have to be mindful of is that because, you know, the, the laptop is here beside me that I'm not on it from eight o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night. You know, there has to be that time that you have to be able to switch off um, as well. So it's about trying to get some structure into your day, trying to maintain that, that structure um, and trying not to get distracted by other things. The great part is I've, I've managed to get some uh, well overdue DIY in the house completed. So I think that's like the majority of the population um, have managed to do that as well. And some work out in the garden when the weather's been really glorious, which has been lovely. Um, but very much it's try and keep to a structure um, and realise as much as you, you try to mirror your working day, um, it's not quite the same as being at work. So, you know, you have to, to make sure you build in, um, you know, your breaks and, and various things. Um, as well absolutely keep connected I would say to anyone out there it's that connection with with people whether it's your colleagues whether it's your class teacher whoever it might be keep that connection going so that we that that everybody's keeping in contact and we know how we're all doing how each other's doing so I think that's really important absolutely and I think even in the opposite if you've noticed that there's someone that you haven't heard from a while or has not been any in the meetings or not in the yeah. quizzes Give them a wee WhatsApp, mm -hmm. see if they're all right. Um, yeah. Because it's a big, cha a big change for everyone. So what uh, are your tricks for not getting distracted? Have you used your phone for alarms? Have you locked yourself away? Have you got yourself a cup of tea? What, how do you survive yeah. it? I, I, I still like my online diary, so I do set my tasks into my online diary so the alarm will go off and I know it's time to do something a bit different. So um, I'm managing to sort of structure my day using that. I also love a to-do list. I'm also getting some time away from home. Uh, we've got a childcare hub for key workers. So this week I am at the childcare hub for two days, which is great. Um, I'm also going to be out um, delivering IT on Friday to some young people who are, are having some challenges with their IT. So um, thankfully I'm not constantly um, tied, to the, um, tied to the house. There are some important in jobs that I still have the opportunity to do. Um, so I'm getting a bit of time out of the house as well, which is good. Yeah, that's great. And it's great to hear that um, IT is getting for people who need it. Yeah, because suddenly yeah. we're so reliant on, uh -huh. on these things. And I know myself, I've dusted off old laptops that I haven't looked uh -huh. at forever. Yeah. Because you use yeah. your phone for everything. And suddenly uh -huh. you can't type more than oh. 30 words. Um, uh -huh. So yeah. It's and I think, that, yeah. I think that's the thing. People either do have... have um, you know, IT that's there, or if you've got multiple family members, you know, for children trying to access work online using their phone can be really tricky. Screens are very small. Um, so obviously we're trying to support our families in the community um, as best we can. So um, yeah, it's, it's good that we're able to do that. And I think everybody's just pulling together to make sure everyone has enough support and have they have the tools um, needed to learn at home or to work at home. Yeah, fantastic. That, that's, um really inspirational that we're managing to do this in the time scale and when everything's shut down as well, but um, yeah. we're still managing to keep everybody um, active and um, participating. Yeah, definitely. So when you go to the school and you drive in, what do you think, oh, I've missed, what do you miss most about being in the school grounds? 
I think obviously the children, the buzz, the excitement of working with young people, um, you know, the the connection that you have with young people, you know, it's it's about the their education, but it's about their, their life as a whole. Um, and really, you know, that impact that you have or the impact that the school will have um, on that young person. Um, and it, young people are great fun. You know, obviously the 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 answer that you got to to your first question when you asked what do you want to do when you leave school, um, you know, you do get some some great responses. And I would imagine if you ask that same young person in ten years' time what their dream job they put and you tell them what they said, they'd probably be like, oh my goodness, did I actually say that? You know, so it is. It's an amazing, an amazing job. It really is. Um, so I miss that. I miss the busyness. I miss um, you know um, that interaction with my colleagues with the families and the community of Girfin. Um, so it's great being down at the childcare hub, you know, there's a, a small number of young people that access that um, and it's great to get that connection again and, and to see learning in action and, and see those inquisitive minds and, and, you know, children amaze you every day. Um, they really do, no matter what age they are, um, they really do amaze you. I'm sure, I'm sure. I go down and speak to, to one class at a time and every class is different. And every uh -huh. answer is different, and the amount of energy that you get is uh, fantastic. I I absolutely love it. I think it's such a joy to do, and I don't do it as a chore at all. I look forward to these uh, uh -huh. afternoons when I go down home and and talk about careers and talk about what I've done. Um, yeah. And it's easy even seeing the the change in their face of wow, yeah, I could do that. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. That you maybe yeah. wouldn't they wouldn't have thought about that particular day otherwise exactly and they will look at you and think you look really young that's the thing and they'll think oh she's really young and she's doing this fabulous job that's amazing <laughs> maybe i can do that um, so i think it is for us it's, it's so appreciated you know when we get ex-pupils when we get speakers into school um, and young people can relate to them i think it's it's amazing and it's inspirational for them as well you guys are working so hard like it yeah. must have been a minefield starting uh -huh. and thinking how are we going to deal with this but you've done fantastically it's so impressive to hear it's such a short time i know and i think i think all schools are in the same same position you know obviously it was something we didn't expect to happen uh, but you know everybody pulls together and we get learning platforms you know up and organized and um you know making sure that young people can access their learning can access support to school as well um i think you know that that's all in place um, and again it goes back to that keeping connected uh, to keep in touch with people yeah it's so important yeah. right now um, because yeah. it is a shock to the system going to school with oh, 700 people or however many uh, every day and then only having your little brother and your mum and dad uh, <laughs> in the house uh, whoever's seen your family yeah definitely absolutely yeah. well thank you for doing this i have learned a lot it's amazing what Garvin Academy and the Academies in Ayrshire are doing right now. Um, and this is just a wee support to keep everyone, to try and keep everyone positive and thinking about their next steps in their career. Um, thanks for taking the time. I know you're extremely busy and um, doing loads of great things. So uh, yeah, thanks for being part of this. You're very welcome. Thanks very much for asking me. It's been lovely. Not at all. Not at all.